Welcome and uh, trust you will be blessed as you join in and listen to God's word, which will come a little later on in the service. And uh, Daniel will be sharing from God's word. And we look forward to hearing the message that he brings. <clears throat> this past week was our church week of intercession, which went well. And it was encouraging to see a good number of you from church take part. And uh, we have known God's presence and help throughout the week and, and look forward to see and hear the, the testimonies of how God has answered prayer. And, and do remember that time spent in prayer is not time wasted, but it's time invested. And we thank God for the answers that are on the way. Also, just to encourage you to know that all seating in the church is socially distanced and there are those who have returned to church and you too are welcome to return to church. And hopefully with the easing of lockdown restrictions for meeting together, we'll also, uh, meeting together will also uh, be lifted the restriction for meeting together. So I just want to encourage you to, to, to consider coming back uh, and to in-person worship services. Also want to congratulate Malcolm and Betty who are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary today. What a wonderful thing it is for them to look back over 60 years of marriage and testify to the grace and the goodness of God over all those years. So I, uh, may you have a wonderful day and, and may God bless you real good. And our opening hymn actually testifies to God's goodness over the years. Uh, Lord for the years.
God has been faithful over the years. I want to read from God's word before I pray. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her bo its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for how you have been faithful, Lord. Thank you that there, there is that delight and, and joy in tasting and seeing that you are good. Father, we pray that today there will be many who will taste and see that the Lord, you are good. Father, thank you for how you've undertaken for us over this past week as we, Lord, have been seeking you as a church, Lord, in prayer. Father, thank you for the help that you have given us, Lord, and we give you thanks. Thank you that we can anticipate and we look forward, Lord, to, to answer to prayer. We pray and seek you, Lord, and pray that your kingdom will come and your will will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for Malcolm and Betty. Thank you for how you have helped them and worked in their lives, in their marriage. Father, thank you for those 60 years. We pray that today the day they would rejoice in you and that, Father, they will, uh, Lord, even recall your good hand that has been upon them. Lord, bless them richly today. And we pray, Father, that, uh, Lord, they might even, even in these, uh, this time of lockdown, Lord, they will still be able to celebrate. We pray for their family as well, that you would remember each and every one from the youngest to the oldest. Father, we commit them to you. We also continue to pray for Stuart and and Wendy, and we commit them to you. Pray for Stuart. We continue to pray for progress and for, for strength and pray that you would help your servant, Lord. And even in these days that, Father, he would just know your constant touch upon his life, Lord, that he would know physical, uh, spiritual, uh, Lord, and uh, in every way he will know uh, your enriching touch upon his life. Uh, be with Wendy. Strengthen her and guide her and keep her, we pray. Lord, we also do pray this morning that you would undertake for Daniel as he, when he brings your word, we pray that you would, uh, Lord, just speak through your servant. Thank you for what you've laid on his heart as we listen to all that Father has been put on his heart as he preaches from your word. Lord, we pray that we would hear your voice, that we would be transformed Lord, from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Thank you for your word that it's alive, it's a living word, sharper than any two-edged sword, and we pray that it will pierce our hearts. Oh, Lord, pierce our hearts in a way that we will believe and that we will see, Lord, the, the harvest of receiving your word. Father, we also pray for a number of things in our world that uh, trouble us. We think of the many that are, are suffering, families there in India, Lord, been overtaken by COVID-19. Lord, we pray that uh, Father help might come to uh, those, Lord, in India that are, Lord, just uh, suffering so much. We commit uh, those who are working amongst uh, people there in India, Lord, we pray, pray that uh, vaccines might reach them and we just commit that situation in your hands. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem as we think of all the trouble there. 
And Father, we, we just commit this to you, Lord. Oh, Father, uh, intervene in every way. Father, we also do pray that you'd be with us as a nation as we come out of lockdown. We pray, oh God, that as things begin to <clears throat> loose, as uh, different things be, be, be begin to take shape, Lord, we pray. Pray for the church. Pray that we'd be able once again to meet and, and sing the praises of Jesus. We pray for your help. We, we, we commit all these changes and the easing of lockdown. Father, we do pray, Father, that the gospel will uh, continue to flow. Pray that there'd be many that would be seeking you at this time, Lord, very conscious of the brevity of life. Father, we realize our great need of you at this time. Pray that you'd revive your church. Pray that the breath of life, the breath and life, the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be known in your church, Lord. Pray that there might be a mighty harvest that will be won. Think of how the Lord Jesus will come again. Oh, that, Father, there will be a great work, that Jesus, your church, will be built. Your perfect bride would be uh, ready for your coming. So help us, Lord, as we continue this gospel work. Oh, Lord, be with us, we pray. and Thank you for this opportunity to, Lord, uh, have these services online. We thank you, Lord, for those who work behind the scene for Adrian and his work. We pray your blessing upon him and his family. Lord, bless your word wherever it's proclaimed today. Lord, we pray the in-person services come to all those who preach your word. Father, we are praying that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, remember those who are not well of our number, those who just need a touch from you, Pray that they might just know your hand upon them. Thank you for how you've answered prayer in many ways. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise. And so we say thank you. Thank you for all your goodness to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> just to say, please do join on Tuesday for the prayer meeting uh, and Thursday for the Zoom drop-in at 7.30. Um, also next Sunday, there will be the in-person service at 10.45 a.m. back at the church in Bartle. We do look forward to seeing you back. And for those unable to return to in-person services for various medical reasons, the online services will be continue at the usual time. If we can be of any help, please do get in touch. And details will appear in the notices at the end of the service. Thank you to Daniel who after this next song will come read, preach from God's word, and then close uh, the service in prayer. Thank you.
good to be here to share with you uh, this morning. So if you could turn in your Bibles to Mark uh, chapter 2 uh, and we'll read from verse 1 to 12. So Mark 2, uh, 1 to 12. And when he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that, this, that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easy to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Uh, back in 2011, uh, ten, just gone 10 years now, uh, there was a royal wedding. Uh, William and Kate got married. Uh, and outside the, the wedding, uh, there were thousands of people uh, eager to go and see that great day. Uh, millions were tuning in on television uh, to see it all. Uh, all over the world, it was viewed as an unmissable event. Uh, the women were longing to, uh, to see the wedding dress, uh, the bridesmaid dresses uh, and the flowers. Uh, and the men were eager to see the program's duration. Uh, in this passage today, uh, the context is similar. Uh, people all over are trying to come and see Jesus. Uh, as we see in chapter 1, uh, Jesus has been healing uh, people all day. Uh, Jesus has been casting out demons uh, and everybody wants to come and see Jesus. Uh, it's manic. Uh, Jesus can't have rest. Uh, people find out where he is, therefore clouds, uh, crowds flock to see him. Uh, Jesus has been showing his authority over all things, over illness and over demons. Uh, and as we see continuing this uh, in verses 1 and 2 of this passage, uh, we hear where Jesus is, therefore people gather so that there's no room uh, even outside the house. Uh, a vast amount of people coming to see Jesus. Most people uh, coming to see Jesus to be healed uh, or to have somebody healed uh, or just to see a miracle. Uh, in today's passage from uh, chapter 2, 1 to 10, uh, Jesus shows us our greatest need. Uh, every man, every woman, their greatest need is not to be physically well, but to be spiritually well. Uh, I have three points today. Uh, the first point is from verses 1 to 5, uh, and that is humanity's need. Uh, so we've already seen these crowds seeking uh, Jesus, seeking uh, to see him, uh, and their motives are to see a miracle uh, or healing. Uh, in verse 2, we notice Jesus preaches the word, word to them. I'm sure we all know the Christian organisation Sports Reach. It uses football um, or netball as a means to share the gospel to men uh, and women. Uh, but Sports Reach uses their desire for sport uh, to share the good news about Jesus. Uh, here we see Jesus uh, using the wrong motives of the people to share the word to them. As Jesus is preaching the word, four men bring this paralytic man to the house, uh, but because of the many people, they couldn't get him uh, to Jesus to be healed. Uh, but as we see in verse 4, uh, these men really wanted their friend uh, to be healed and physically restored. Therefore, uh, they go on the roof, 
cut a hole in the roof and lower this man to Jesus so that Jesus would heal him. Uh, I'm sure the owner of the house wouldn't be too happy uh, with this man, uh, with these men cutting a hole in his roof. Uh, but anyway, they lowered this man to Jesus and Jesus says to them, Son, your sins are forgiven. Um, why, why does Jesus say that? Uh, nearly everyone there will have been like, what's Jesus on about? Why is he saying this? Uh, why doesn't he just heal the man what he's been doing uh, beforehand? Uh, I hope that this doesn't happen to any of us, but I want you to imagine uh, that you need uh, open heart surgery. Uh, you go down to the hospital, you get ready for it all, uh, and as you're getting wheeled into the uh, theatre on a bed and about to go down, uh, the surgeon um, says to you, uh, everything's, everything's going to be all right, uh, your sins are forgiven. Uh, what, what are you going to say to that? Uh, well, that's nice, but I'm here for my open heart surgery. Everybody, everybody in verses 1 to 5 are focused on this man's physical need. Uh, but Jesus cuts right to the heart and shows what this man actually needs. Uh, that is forgiveness, not his body healed. In today's world, people focus on their needs. I need that new car. Uh, I need that new job. I need that relationship. I need that house. Uh, maybe not in their, their uh, words, but in their actions. Uh, but we don't need uh, the physical. We need the, the spiritual, uh, which is forgiveness in Jesus. Uh, but why do we need this uh, forgiveness so much? Uh, there's a saying that goes around, uh, not everybody is perfect. Um, and that is the problem. Uh, no one is perfect, but God has set a standard seen in the Ten Commandments. Uh, and God only accepts people who have obeyed his standards perfectly. Uh, and because not one of us are perfect, we are under God's judgment. We are under God's wrath because we're lawbreakers. Uh, so we have a major problem because God must punish sin because he is just. Uh, and we have all sinned, uh, every one of us, uh, since we see in Romans uh, 3.23. Uh, so is there, any, is there any hope for us? Uh, yes, God saw our mess. He saw our sin. Uh, he saw our wickedness. Uh, and he gave us an offer of salvation. Uh, he sent Jesus to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven in Jesus. Uh, if we admit we've sinned and turn to Jesus, put our whole trust in Jesus, uh, we can be saved. Uh, have you done that? Have you had your greatest need met in Jesus? Maybe you're listening now and sensing, I need to be forgiven. Uh, I've done wrong. I've sinned. Uh, let me tell you, come to Jesus. Ask for forgiveness uh, f for, Jesus, uh, for your sin. Uh, you can come to Jesus. Uh, don't put it off. Come to Jesus today. Don't listen to the lie of Satan that says you have plenty of time to come. Uh, just just come to Jesus, ask for forgiveness and trust him uh, and, and give your life over to him. Uh, moving on to my second point, humanity's saviour. Uh, this is from verses uh, 6 to 11. Uh, we meet Jesus' opposition for the first time in Mark, the, the teachers of the law. Uh, they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, uh, but here they highlight a major doctrine about who Jesus is. Jesus claimed to have authority to forgive sin in verse 5. Uh, therefore, verses 6 and 7 show the implications of that claim. Jesus claimed that he, he was, Jesus claimed that he was God because he said he could, could forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. The teachers of the law have that correct, but their conclusion about who Jesus is is incorrect. Therefore, Jesus gives uh, them three evidences uh, that he is God. Uh, verse 8 and 9. And immediately, Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your, uh, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk? Uh, Jesus asked the teachers of the law, uh, why are you thinking these things? 
Jesus knew their thoughts and they didn't even utter a word. Uh, Jesus knew what they were thinking. Uh, only God knows the inward thoughts of man. Uh, the second proof Jesus is God is interlocked with the third proof. He shows he can forgive sins by instantly healing a paralyzed man. Uh, Jesus knows all of man's inward, inward thoughts. Jesus can forgive sin and Jesus can instantly heal anyone by his words. Uh, why, why can he do this? Because he is God. Uh, today, who do you think Jesus is? Uh, the Muslims uh, say Jesus is a prophet, a good man, but he is not God. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe Jesus is a saviour, but he is not God. Many people of the world today believe Jesus was a good man, a good teacher, uh, and somebody who did amazing things, but they, they don't believe he is God. Uh, the problem with, with that is that Jesus is either a uh, God or a lying blasphemer. Uh, Jesus claimed to be God, so your conclusion on who Jesus is, uh, he can only be either God or a liar. There is no middle ground. If Jesus is God, you must listen to his words. Jesus can forgive sin. He is the perfect saviour. And because Jesus is God, anyone can receive forgiveness of sin through him. Uh, humanity's greatest need uh, is not physical healing, but spiritual healing. And that is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. Uh, Jesus has been sent uh, for salvation to all who will call on his name. Uh, now on to, on to the last point, uh, the Saviour's change, uh, verse 11 and 12. I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed, went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. What power Jesus has. Uh, just by his words, this man is totally healed. The man is forgiven and all the people uh, are amazed and glorified God. Uh, we see here from the power of Jesus' words in verse 11 that no longer will this man go out of that house the same as he came in. This man is a changed man. No longer will he be carried around by his four friends, but his life is changed. Uh, this man meets Jesus and Jesus changes his life. Uh, what an illustration of the born-again Christian. Uh, they receive forgive, uh, after they receive forgiveness through Jesus. Uh, when we are saved uh, and forgiven, we become new people. Uh, not perfect people, uh, but changed people. Our lives are turned around. We are no longer people who are slaves to sin but we are God's children seeking to obey him because we are accepted uh, by him through Jesus Christ. Uh, but this gives us, uh, this bids us to ponder our lives. Uh, this morning I wonder, um, as you look over your life, would you say there's been a radical change? Uh, becoming a Christian is a change of life. Uh, as Second, uh, Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If you say you're a Christian, yet your life has not changed, uh, there's a big question to whether you are saved. Also, as Christians, our lives continue to slowly change, a progressive change. Uh, we should be people who seek to be changed uh, more and more uh, like Jesus. Uh, Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Uh, the Christian cannot obtain sinlessness, uh, but an obedience to God ought to be increasing. Uh, I urge you, uh, and myself to ask the Lord to change us more and more. Maybe each day, uh, write down the things uh, we shouldn't have done that day and write down the things we could improve 
uh, and pray them through that God would stir us up uh, for holiness. Uh, let us run from sin. Uh, we, we know our weaknesses uh, and let us seek the changed life in Jesus. Uh, pray and pray and pray uh, that God would deliver us from sin and make us useful for his glory. Uh, then go out into each day, uh, living obedient uh, while trusting the Holy Spirit to work in us. Uh, as a believer, if you look at your life and you see change, you see things are different uh, bef uh, from before you were saved, and you've seen a slow, gradual, not perfect, but gradual change, uh, rejoice and be thankful that God uh, is working in you. Uh, as uh, Philippians 1, 6 says, And I am sure of this, that he who begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, a man was once uh, walking past a workman. Uh, this workman was carving a stone, so the man uh, said to him, uh, What are you doing? Uh, the workman said, I am carving this stone for this tall building uh, and I'm carving it down here so that it's ready for when it goes up there. Uh, God is changing us uh, down here on earth so that the, we are ready for when we go up to be with him. Uh, let me conclude. Uh, to the Christian, let us be people who have received forgiveness, who believe Jesus to be God, and let us be people who show it by obedience. Uh, and then to the unbeliever, uh, this passage divides two kinds of people, uh, the paralytic uh, and the teachers of the law. The teachers of the law, they don't receive forgiveness because they don't believe Jesus to be God. Therefore, they go away the same as they came in. Uh, but the paralytic, he receives forgiveness, believes in Jesus. Uh, therefore, he goes away a different person. Uh, God will one day call time on the world and every, everyone will be either forgiven by Jesus or will be without forgiveness and under ju judgment. God will divide uh, both. If you come to Jesus for forgiveness, you'll be saved and in God's kingdom. Uh, but if you don't come to Jesus, the wrath of God abides on you and the just penalty you receive uh, is in the lake of fire. God's judgment poured out on unrepentant sinners. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh, but if we confess our sins, uh, he is faithful to forgive us. Uh, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, our greatest need is forgiveness and it, it can only be found in Jesus. Uh, trust him with your all and you will be secure uh, in Jesus. Uh, let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you that we've been able to look at your word this morning. Uh, I just pray that you would uh, really speak to us by your Holy Spirit. Uh, I pray for the unbeliever. I pray that they might turn to your son Jesus and be forgiven uh, and changed. Uh, and I pray for, for Christians that, that we might be uh, continually changed by your Holy Spirit working in us. I pray that we might be useful for your glory uh, and that you might stir us up in holiness, that we might worship you with our lives uh, and show others the, good, uh, the goodness of Jesus and that they might turn to him. Uh, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the
them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love for me go down. Did as such love and sorrow meet, or forms compose so rich a crown. Dan for uh, for that word. I want to um, give an update on the uh, on the building work that's uh, taking place um, at Crown Lane, and want to just uh, read a a verse, uh, Psalm one hundred and twenty seven. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labour in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And um, as we've thought about the uh, different projects that we want to carry out at church, um, it's really important to us that this is a project uh, which the Lord will build in our midst. Uh, there are three uh, different projects and uh, you will of course as you, uh, if you've driven past church, uh, you will have seen this, but if you haven't been at church for a while, then these uh, pictures will be uh, will be new to you. Um, this picture here shows the extension at the end of church, which is um, for a stairwell and a lift shaft in order to take us up to the space above um, the extension uh, that we're going to use uh, uh, for an office and the meeting room. Uh, and some other uh, space up there. We'll look at that again in, in a minute. Then we have uh, the um, extension and refurbishment uh, of the toilets. And um, as you can see here, the extension obviously has gone all the way down to the end. So the prayer room has an extension uh, too. Um, and then the... Uh, Sorry, this the, this picture is showing the inside of the um, the side extension with the staircase and the lift uh, going up to that first floor. And there's another uh, picture of the lift. Um, upstairs is a, a, a big space, and we are uh, going to be having two rooms: an office and, and a meeting room. Um, and those are these these two rooms here. So this is one of the uh, meeting rooms. As you can see, a large window in there, uh, bringing light in. And then this is the uh, office, and uh, there's some storage space uh, in the in the wall there as well. This is uh, not finished yet, as you can see, but uh, this is the new ladies uh, toilets with um, wash basin, uh, two, two wash basins and then um, three uh, toilet uh, cubicles. Uh, as you can see the, um, the, the tiling um, has been uh, challenging because there's a, a curved wall in the ladies toilet and so we've had to use a slightly different kind of um, tile there. Uh, we have a, a new uh, disabled 
uh, toilet. Um, again, this isn't finished yet. This is the one that we're using in church at the at the moment. Um, but there will be a full disabled um, unit there. And then we have the men's um, toilets completely uh, refurbished. And then this is the extension on the um, prayer room. So this will uh, obviously make the room that little bit bigger um, for adventurers and prayer meetings and, and things like that. Then outside we have this um, large brick built storage building. This end um, we're going to be keeping our machines in there, the lawnmowers and various things. And then um, that's just a sort of a close up of the inside space. Uh, the other end is a storage area where we're going to keep the toys um, and spare chairs and things like that. So this, this is a very good um, facility that, uh, that we will have. Um, and then because of the side extension, um, the fire exit now can't come around the side of the building so there will be um, a, a gate um, to allow people to come out and go on to um, the road, Crown Lane, um, in the case of an emergency. So those are the, the, three, um, the three projects that we are, are working on and um, we are hoping that uh, it won't be too much longer before um, we've finished with those. Um, I just wanted to share a few um, prayer points uh, with you. Um, first of all, that, um, that we pray for, for the safety uh, of the workmen. You know, we know that uh, two of our churches have had accidents um, with workmen and um, where well, they have been injured and so you know this is a dangerous business and we want to pray um, for the safety of the, the workmen. Uh, we have a, um, a, a group, uh, Cameron is the, the site manager, he is the stepson of Mick Bamber um, who's the son of Mick and Marjorie Bamber. Um, his um, twin brother uh, Reese is a joiner and then we have um, two errands. Uh, one is uh, a bricklayer, the other is an apprentice. And then there are various other um, workmen coming on site to do various different things. Um, one of the issues we've had is delivery of materials. It's been a very difficult time with the lockdowns and things like that. And we're still struggling to get certain things on site. Um, and uh, we're, we're currently waiting for materials and we can't finish certain things until we get those. Um, another um, prayer point is the availability of contractors. That again has been an issue, actually trying to get people in at the times that we need them in. Um, it's been hard to do that and um, uh, please uh, pray for that. Also please pray for the relationship that we have with the builder and the contractors and uh, we, we think this is a, a very important thing um, that we want to, um, to work well with them. We also of course want to, uh, if we get opportunity, talk to them about the Lord and um, uh, please you know, pray for, for that, for opportunities to, to talk to them and do pray that uh, the, the devil, the enemy, won't uh, be able to get in and, um, and cause a uh, you know, a, a rift between us. We do pray that our relationship will remain good. Uh, and finally, we need a vision for the future use of these facilities. We do pray that, um, you know, we're not just building these things for the sake of it, that the Lord will, uh, will use these new facilities um, for his glory. Thank you. Gain, I count but